Welcome to this overview of the brand new update for MPC Live, X, One and Desktop version 2.8, bringing some of the most compelling features to our MPC standalone and desktop software platform. We now have integrated MIDI Multi, turning your MPC into the heart of any studio or live performance by allowing you to connect up to 32 USB devices that you can now control directly from your MPC. From iconic synthesizers to drum machines to USB compliant keyboards, they can all now be plugged into a USB hub and controlled from the MPC hardware. So why don't you join me and let's have a closer look at the brand new update for MPC version 2.8. So the first thing we're going to look at on our brand new 2.8 update is MIDI Multi. This allows you to connect and route all of your MIDI studio equipment directly to your MPC in fully standalone mode. This means that we can connect class compliant USB keyboards, MIDI to CV modules, external synthesizers, MIDI IO interfaces, which are all connected to a USB hub, which is then connected to the USB on your MPC-1, dramatically increasing your IO. Now to access multi-MIDI, hold down Shift and Preferences and press the MIDI Sync tab. Now our MIDI in and output ports are displayed on our screen. Now to configure our MIDI multi, let's go to our USB hub and we'll turn on our devices. Now as we turn our devices, they will instantly be recognized by our MPC. We we'll turn on device two and it pops up on the screen. Then we we'll go to our device three, which is our USB sound module, turn this on and instantly it's recognized on our inputs and outputs. Now we can customize our names in our inputs and outputs by simply pressing the keyboard icon. So let's take our MIDI interface, which is connected to our mini Nova. And once you've changed the name, simply press OK and now that will update in our main screen. Now to configure our MIDI Multi, we have a number of options. Now when track is on, that means our device is active and it will appear in our list of MIDI inputs. Then we have control. This means our MIDI port will be sent to our MIDI Learn. Then we have master. When on, the MIDI from this port will always go to the current track. So as an example, I would set my USB keyboard to master, which means that every time I select a track, my keyboard will be able to play back that device. So now I'm playing back my Mini Nova. We can switch our track and go to a key group. And my keyboard will always be the master. Then we have our output ports. Now this has track on, which means that the MIDI port will appear in our list of available track MIDI outputs. And then we have sync on and off. Now this will allow us to synchronize units such as drum machines, external arpeggiators with our MPC. Now to configure our MIDI inputs and outputs on MPC, let's go to our track view. Here we can view all of our MIDI information. We can see the type of track that we have and the track name. Then we have our MIDI inputs, which we can configure by double tapping our screen and then you can select your MIDI inputs. Then we have the same on our MIDI outputs, simply double tap. And then we have our record arm status. Now for single track recording, simply highlight the record button. For multi-track recording, hold down shift and then simply press the tracks that you want to record simultaneously. Then to come out of multi-record, simply press the record arm. MIDI tracks also have an input monitor button with four different monitoring types. When set to off, this is ideal when using MPC to sequence a workstation keyboard when local is set to on, delivering a faster and accurate playback response. Then we have track monitor in. This always monitors the track's input regardless of the track's record arm state. This is useful when using MPC to trigger an external sound module. Then we have auto, which is our default monitoring mode. You would generally find this works for most recording applications. And then finally we have merge. 
which always monitors the track's input regardless of the record arm. At 2.8, you can now send MIDI from one track to another, which allows us to layer sound generators such as plug-in instruments, key groups, or external synths triggered by either our pads or a USB keyboard. Now to do this, we open up our channel strip and make sure that you've got the track icon selected. Now let's play our sound. And if we now press the send to track tab, I can now send my MIDI from this track to another track. So let's go to track three. This is where we have a pluck sound. So now let's go back to original track and we are now triggering track three. So we've now layered two sounds from one track. Now we could change this to a Rhodes. So simply again, select the track you want to blend. And now you can hear the Rhodes underneath. Now we can also copy this process to trigger even more tracks. So if we go to our pluck sound and then we go to our send MIDI, Let's trigger another instrument from this track. And now if we go back to our original track, we are now triggering all three instruments from one track. If you repeat this process, you can keep on layering more instruments. Now we can also trigger external keyboards this way. Let's go to a track. We're going to use F9 audio and I'm going to blend our mini Nova directly with this patch. So now when I play my pads, we trigger in the F9 key group and my external synth. Now if we go back to our original track at the beginning, I'm now triggering all of these tracks from one track. And this is a great feature for adding textures to your productions or for live performance. Let's add this to a track. You can now create your own chord progressions directly in standalone mode using 2.8. Now to do this is very straightforward. Let's use our MPK Mini to drive some chords into our sequencer. So we're recording this progression directly into our sequencer. Now that we've recorded our chords, go to our grid edit, and here we can see what we've recorded into our timeline. Now to convert these into a progression, let's go to our pencil icon on our track and hit export to progressions. And here we can start naming our progression type. So let's call this R&B chords. Now once you've named your progression type, simply press do it. Then below this, you can set your root note. So you might want to set up a C3, C2, etc, etc. Then next to that, you can set your scale type. If it's a major, minor scale. Then below this, we can go to our individual chords that we've created. Now, MPC will auto detect the chord for you, but you can customize these. Then below that, you can set up what will be your main root chord. Now, you can also preview each chord so you can then decide which one will be your root. Now that's all completed, simply press do it and now we've saved our progression. Now to access the progression in our notes mode, hold shift and notes, go to progressions and then go to our R&B chords. So you can now play these chords in any particular order that suits your production directly from the MPC pads. Now the great thing about this, we can now switch out the track, change a different sound, and then play these chords directly. So now let's add this over our beat.
We've added to 2.8 retrospective record mode. This means all MIDI events are now being recorded in the background. So if you come up with a great idea and you didn't record it, you can now recall this idea and add it to your production. Here's an example. So I'm going to trigger a melodic sample and I'm going to play some ideas directly over the top from my pads. But I'm not recording. Now if I like that idea, I can now hit shift and record, go to my grid edit, and now you can see all the parts that I just played. Now these are all on our sequence timeline, so all I do, press play, I'll quantize what I've just performed, and I'm going to add to this production. i add some additional hi-hats. So now whenever you have a great idea and you didn't record it, we can now recall this and put it straight into our production. Inside 2.8, we've added text information overlay to our cue links, giving you instant parameter feedback. As you touch the capacitive knobs, you can see the parameters that are assigned to each cue link. We can go through our banks. I can see my swing, my quantize settings, metronome. We can go to our grid edit. We can control our scrolling, our horizontal zoom, and much more. If we go to a plug-in instrument track, I can change my cue link mode to program, and now I can see all the parameters assigned to that plug-in instrument oscillators, cutoff filters, LFOs, everything that's assigned to my cue links. Having visual feedback of your cue links really enhances your workflow on your MPC standalone. Inside 2.8, we've now enhanced the way that you can use pad performance and notes mode. This is now available in our main mode, so you don't have to jump between screens. Now we can simply preview any of our patches directly by still being in our notes and performance mode. We can jump from key groups to plug in instruments and audition all of these patches by playing chords, scales or melodies. Once you find the patch you like, simply hit record and then start editing your patch, all within the main window. Now to change your pad performance mode, simply go into the parameter, press the mode that you wish to use, chromatic, chords, scales, etc. and then go back into our main workflow window. Now that mode is accessible in our main workflow. In 2.8, we've now added the ability to copy pads between drum programs. Now to do this, simply go to the pencil icon and then press the copy pad tab and now we can select our pad and we select the kit that we want to copy the pad to and then we can select a pad within that program. Press do it and you've now copied the pad to a different drum program. You can now create custom note mappings for any program types. Press the edit map tab and now you can select the pad. Once selected, we now go down to the MIDI note and select the note you wish to change the mapping to or you can use one of the three presets available. You can now easily change tracks from any MPC mode. Simply hold down the main button to bring up the track and either use the touch UI or the pads to jump between tracks. Now under our quantize, you now have the ability to turn quantize directly on and off, either from the touch UI or directly from the dedicated button. Simply hold down shift and turn quantize on and off. 
we've also updated the behavior of the automation button, which has now been modified, allowing read and write only. Holding down shift and pressing the automation button will now turn automation off. Under our TC field, in the arpeggiator option, you now have radio buttons dedicated to the different time divisions. Thanks for watching this update of the brand new 2.8 update for MPC Live, X, MPC One and Desktop. See you next time.